the most successful female rapper of all time. And exclusively for you tonight only, she's giving us a first listen at her brand new single, Do We Have a Problem, featuring Lil Baby. Show to love and make some noise for the queen for herself, Nikki Minaj. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're reminiscing about Nicki Minaj's iconic 2022 debut, her collaboration, Do We Have a Problem, featuring Little Baby as February 4th, 2023 marks the one year anniversary of the song's release. Now, I'm not just saying it's iconic because I love Nikki. It's because this rollout was amazing, multi-layered, filled with appearances, interviews, social media campaigns, and it really brought Nikki's career full circle 15 years in. Nikki wasn't super active in 2021. It was a low-key year for her, especially after 2020 when she gave birth to Papa Bear, and her first major project after that was re-releasing Be Me Up Scotty in May of 2021. And she had did features here and there with Bia and Jesse Nelson and Polo G, but all of the promo was mostly social media. Then towards the end of the year, she went silent on a mini hiatus, only giving us a Christmas family photo and birthday photos. So she wasn't active on social media. And of course, everyone was anticipating the rollout of the fifth, fifth album, but we had no idea what was coming. On January 26, 2022, Nikki took to Twitter to announce the single with Little Baby to be released. Each day after that, she dropped a picture or a short video of the behind the scenes process of filming the video. There was a full week of promotion, press, and marketing leading up to the single. When Nikki announced the song's release, she also publicized a hotline that fans could call to communicate the problems they were facing and potentially get advice from her. The night of the drop on February 3rd, Nikki made an appearance at the LA Clippers game at the Staples Center in Los Angeles with her team and family and premiered DWAP there. The stadium was lit in pink to honor her. There were also billboards in Times Square and other major cities, along with playlisting on Rap Life, the biggest hip hop playlist on Apple Music, and Rap Caviar on Spotify. It was great to see Nikki receive that support for major DSPs and from her label Republic Records. Do We Have a Problem was written by Nicki Minaj and Little Baby, of course, and produced by Haitian American producer Papier, which features an unforgettable repeating violin riff, which he came up with himself. He said, I always want to have moments in music where someone's like, I've never heard that or that's different. Papier. <laughs> Happy year, you better brush your motherfucking shoulders with nigga. You did the fuck out that beat, nigga. Yeah. Let's not forget the hard bass and 808 that continues to knock and hits hard with Nikki's hard bars. And she proved once again that she's able to adapt not only with the sonic changes in hip hop, but with the melodic advantage that little baby brings to the game. My favorite part of the song is, trust me, they gon' let me know. They gon' rip me when I catch you like in that 45 special flow. I can't sing, okay? But I want to know, you know, what's your favorite part in the song? So let me know in the comments. The official music video was directed by Nikki's longtime collaborator, Benny Boom, and dropped on the same day, February 4th. Taking inspiration from one of Nikki's favorite movies, Salt, starring Angelina Jolie, the clip centers on a secret auction starring Nikki as an agent with Joseph Sakura as her partner and Corey Hardrick as a criminal. And of course, Little Baby bidding on prized items. The music video has several versions, a long one, which is nine minutes, and then a four minute one and a BTS. DWAP accumulated 4.1 million views in the first 24 hours and is ranked number three for the biggest 24 hour debuts by a female rapper on YouTube in 2022. The second best part of the rollout was all of the interviews Nikki did to promote the song. She did at least five virtual interviews with major and not so major radio shows to promote DWAP, which was amazing because we had something to watch every day. In one of those interviews, Nikki described how motherhood had changed her approach to writing lyrics and that she wanted to now stray away from writing songs that were too overtly sexual and that she wanted to return to the mixtape style bars she used earlier in her career. 
In an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music One, Nikki said that upon hearing the track's beat for the first time, she immediately knew she wanted to have Little Baby on it because it was his vibe and the song, and she wanted to bring back real rap records with the natural essence of rap. I said, I said, now listen, I know I wanted Baby to be on the first record. I said, but I'm leaning toward this. I said, I want to give Baby the first, you know, offer just respectfully to say, hey, I told you guys you would be on the first single, but I might change it to this record. Do we have a problem now? I'll leave a link to those interviews in the description below so y'all can check it out. Okay, so for the commercial performance, DWAP achieved a number one on US iTunes and probably more than 40, between 40 and 50 number ones on iTunes around the world. It spent a total of 106 hours at the number one spot on US iTunes with combined versions, so clean, explicit, and instrumental. We also went number one on Amazon, 7 Digital, and other buying platforms that I can't even remember right now. It peaked at number one on Apple Music in less than 24 hours of its release and accumulated 2.28 million streams on Spotify in its first 24 hours. In total first week sales, it debuted with 210 total units, with 48,000 of those as pure sales. DWAP debuted at number seven on the Billboard Global 200, earning Nikki her 11th entry and her first top 10 entry and marked Little Baby's fifth entry. In America, it debuted at number two on the Hot 100, marking Nikki's 20th career top 10 entry and Little Baby's ninth on the chart, and it's concurrently tied as Little Baby's highest charting entry since his Drake collaboration, Girls Want Girls and Wants and Needs. We ain't done yet, child. Additionally, DWAP debuted at number one on the digital song sales chart with 48,000 digital downloads sold in its first week, marking Nikki's ninth number one and Little Baby's first entry on the chart. DWAP also drew in 24.4 million on-demand streams, debuting at number two on the streaming songs chart. And it also topped the hot R&B and hip hop songs and hot rap songs chart, earning Nicki her seventh number one and Little Baby's first on both. Here's the real tea. DWAP completely outsold the next seven best-selling songs combined on the digital song sales chart. And even Forbes had to write about it. If you didn't know, Nicki Minaj is the best-selling female rapper of all time, dead or alive. The only reason DWAP didn't go number one was because that Encanto song was out, that child's movie or whatever it was, I don't even know exactly. Who's still talking about it? Nobody. So Nicki Minaj should have had that number one, but you know, number two is obviously still great. So congratulations to her little baby and the Barb's and Republic and her whole team for the DWAP rollout. It ultimately spent 13 weeks on the Hot 100 and won Best Hip Hop at the 2022 MTV Video Music Awards, where Nicki also received the Video Vanguard Award. Enough chart talk. My favorite part of the rollout was Nikki coming on the Station Head app to stream and speak with the fans. I got to speak to her directly. Here's a quick snippet of our conversation. I want to say, first of all, thank you because um, I saw your name. I saw y'all, this name popping up when I was on Twitter a lot saying, yo, they, they be going hard for you. They be showing you mad love. They always promoting. And I was like, okay, well, I need to make sure I stop by there and, and make sure I, I express my gratitude. Um, you know, and I didn't know who wanted to know how many of you guys wanted, but I just want to say thank you very much. I'll we'll do this every day for the rest of my life. I don't care. Will DWAP be on NM5? Most likely, Nikki mentioned wanting to have one of the collabs with Little Baby on the album. And remember, she teased Bussin at the end of the video for DWAP. So yeah, Bussin dropped the following Friday after DWAP and debuted at number 20 on the Hot 100. DWAP is now platinum in several countries, so I definitely believe it'll be on the album. It was a mini era to never forget. My question for you, though, is, do you think DWAP is a standout in Nicki's catalog? You know how with artists, most of their best music is usually early in their career? Well, when DWAP came out, I asked myself, does this have the potential to be a legendary song in Nicki's discography? 
She already has a legendary catalog of hits, so anything new will be measured up to it. But sitting back and reflecting a year later, I'm falling in love with this song all over again. Hold up, shawty, hold up, bitch. We'll get you in the mood for this song every time, and the beat is just so hard. One thing about Nikki is that she's going to ride the beat, and it's never too strong for her. I definitely see D-Wop as a standout in her catalog, and I'll be listening for years to come. It'll always bring me back to this rollout and the personal connection that I have with it. I have questions for y'all and I need some answers. You guys can find these in the description below as well. But what's your favorite part of the song? What was your favorite part of the rollout? How do you feel about Little Baby's verse? Was he necessary on the song? And in years from now, do you think D-Wop will be a monumental part of Nicki's catalog? As always, thanks for clicking on this video and making it to the end. Please like and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I post. Oh, and I'm going to link my last video on Nikki um, in the description as well. So make sure to check it out. Later.